back focus is something everyone struggles with when they're starting their astrophotography career. But in this video, I'm going to demystify back focus. We're going to talk about what it is, and I'm going to show you concrete hands-on example on how to get your back focus just right. But what is back focus? Well, whenever you have any kind of optical equipment, whether that's a lens or mirror, there will be a certain distance away from that mirror or, or glass lens where it is designed to work optimally. This distance is called the back focus. And if your camera sensor is not correctly positioned according to where it should be, then you might in, in severe cases not be able to focus at all. Or in less severe cases, you might begin to see artifacts. For instance, if your camera is too close, you will begin to see the stars at the edge of your pictures kind of form a circle around the center. Kind of like if you have star trails, but you want the star trails at the center, but you will have at the edges. On the other hand, if the camera is too far away from your back focus or it's too far away from your lens or, or mirror, well, the, the stars is going to all point inwards in towards the center and at least out of the edges of the picture. Again, not a, um, uh, not a desirable effect. Take a look at this picture. This is a single subframe that I took of the Andromeda Galaxy. And here I, uh, I purposely set the camera at the wrong back focus. If you look at it in the center of the picture, we can see the stars, they're nice and round, they look okay. If you look out at the edges, we can see that they become elongated. As we can see, the camera here was just too close to the center, or to, to, the, to the telescope, and therefore to kind of get this like uh, streaking of, of the stars out at the edge. But in order to make this easier to understand, let me show you some concrete hands-on examples of how you do this right. Now, even though we have a rather complicated thing with light coming in here that bounces off a mirror there and then off a mirror here and then coming out here, we really only need to worry about the last optical element in our optical train. What I mean with that is you don't need to worry about filters because filters just block light, but you just need to worry about the last element that alters the path of the light. In my case, it's this one. This is a coma corrector that sits here in the focus tube that just fixes some of the coma that Newtonians are known to have. So this bends light. This is the last optically active element, if you will, that's in my optical train. So this is the one I need to worry about. Now, if I look up what kind of back focus this needs, this needs 55 millimeters of back focus. Luckily, that's very standard. A lot of things are gonna require 55 millimeters. In most cases, you're gonna end up with that actually, but not always, so do look it up at either the manufacturer or on an online store, or whatever you bought it, it's likely they're gonna list what kind of back focus they need. And when they list back focus, it's not from the lenses, it's from the flange. So you have a small um, thread here, thread is not included, it's from the actual end of the body where the lens is housed. This is where we measure back focus from, so threads not included. So let's say I want to attach this camera to this coma corrector. As I said, we're measuring from the flange, but we are measuring to the sensor and not to the flange of the camera here. So we need to go all the way into the sensor. Luckily, that's a super easy value to find as it's just listed online. This camera has a, a Canon RF mount. And if we go into Wikipedia, I'll provide a link for this list in the description as well. We can see that this camera has a 20 millimeter optical path. That means from the front of the, um, of the lens mount to the plane of the center is 20 millimeters. That means I still need 35 millimeters in between here because 55 minus 20 is 35 in order for this to be the right distance. Now, the first thing we're gonna attach is this. This is a adapter from RF to EF mount. And why do we attach that? Because I have most of my cases um, with a EF mount instead of an RF mount. And we can see that this is like, it's kind of thick, right? If you look at it. So now by putting this on, we actually have the back focus of a EF mount, um, which basically means we add another 24 millimeters to get up to the EF mount distance, so that means now from the flange here to the center, we can go and look up the EF mount, we're now up to 44 millimeters. And that means we just have 11 millimeters to go from this edge right here until we're ready to attach to the coma corrector. To do that, you get what's called a T-ring. The T-ring just slots in as if it were a lens. If I can turn this correctly, there we go, clicks in here. 
and that then gives you a T thread in here or a M42 thread, which happens to be the same thread that I have on my um, on my um, coma corrector. So now I can screw in my coma corrector here because this T ring is exactly 11 millimeters. So we have 20 millimeters in the body. We have 24 millimeters in the adapter, giving us up to 44. And then we have 11 millimeters on the T ring, giving a coming up to 55 millimeters, which is exactly the back focus that this needs. So with this setup now, I can take this, slot this into my telescope, and I'm now ready to take pictures with correct back focus. In this next example, we're gonna to try to take the same camera, but now we're gonna be attaching this to this William Op 16 Star 73. On this, again, we need to look for the last optically active element. The last thing that's on here is this piece here, which is a field flattener. This field flattener does not need 55 millimeters. This is one of those cases where you need to go and look it up. If we look up the uh, little spec here from the manufacturer, we can see that this does actually need 56.8 millimeters in order to reach correct back focus for this field flatter. And this is why it's important to look it up and not just assume it's 55, because you might get into trouble if you do that. But we're going to start with the same setup where we started last time, same camera body, same adapter from, uh, from uh, RF to EF, and the same T-ring. So we now know we have 55 millimeters at the front flange right here. Now, problem is I can't just screw this on because this T-ring comes with the normal T-thread, which is M42. This is an M48 thread. So what I'm gonna need is a small adapter here. This is a M42 to M48 adapter. And I can just take this and I can screw that in. Theoretically, there we go. Screw that in like so. And now this will actually screw on here, but we have a problem. You see, this adapter here adds two millimeters. So this means we now have 55 for the entire train as we saw before. Added to, we are now up to 57 millimeters. And remember this needs 56.8, meaning that we are now 2.2 millimeters too far away from correct back focus. And that's no good. Even though this back focus, we can, you can turn this dial here, the gray one here, and then you can basically push the entire a mounting like flange that way up to 15 millimeters. But with all the adapters, we are too already too far away. So pushing it further away is only gonna make it worse. So with this setup here, I wouldn't actually be able to reach correct back focus. How do we solve it? Well, what we could do or what I've done here is I'm gonna take the T-ring off. And I went out and I got another T-ring. It is essentially the same. The main difference is that this new one has a bigger opening than the old one, as you might be able to see here. This is an M48 thread. That means I don't need that adapter. So this is already pre-adapted to fit on this telescope. And, and adding to that, this is only 10 millimeters thick instead of the 11 millimeters that we had on the other one. So if we take this, click that in like so, it's, this can now screw on here if I wanted to. And because this is only uh, 10 millimeters, we're now down to 44 millimeters. That means that we are 2.8 millimeters too close. But as I said, we can push it back by adjusting this. And there's a little scale in here that you can turn and you can see how far you pushed it back. So I would have to turn this until I reach those 2.8 millimeters um, that I would need. And then I could lock the whole thing in, put the camera on, and I would now have my correct 56.8 millimeters of back focus in order for everything here to be correct. In the final example, I want to try and attach this astro camera to this telescope, and we again try to see how we get the correct back focus. First of all, the camera we're dealing with here is a ZWO ASI 2600mm Pro. And again, if we go and look up the manufacturer's spec, we can see the optical path from the front flange of the camera, which is here, back to the center is 17 and a half millimeters. On the camera here, you can see I have this big black box. This is my filter wheel where all the filters sits. That adds 20 millimeters of optical path to this whole optical train. So with the 17 and a half plus the 20 uh, here, we are up to now 37 and a half millimeters. What I also have here is I have a small adapter because this comes out with M48 and I need a M no, sorry, M54, and I need 
M48 in order for it to fit here. So I have an adapter. This adapter also adds two millimeters. So adding that to the mix, we're now up to 39.5 millimeters total. Now, if I screwed this on here now, the problem is I, would, I can only adjust this 15 millimeters out. So that's not enough to actually reach back focus. I can't get this far enough out. I would be, um, I'll basically be too close with it. And therefore I would need this extension tube that actually comes with the camera. This extension tube can screw in here like so. And this adds 16 and a half millimeters of additional optical path. So with this on, this brings us out to 56 millimeters of total optical path from the front of this to the center. And remember we needed um, 56.8, and that means I'm missing 0.8 millimeters. So I would adjust this to 0.8 millimeters, and then I could screw this on and I would be in perfect back focus. I really hope this video helped you demystify back focus and help you understand what it is. And hopefully you learned that it's not so scary as it may seem. You just need a bunch of adapters of the right size. Allow me to give you a very quick tour of this thing. So this is a Meet LXD75. I got this second hand. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five concrete recommendations for telescopes for less than a thousand that you can use, and you can then choose one that fits your exact need.